Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a look at a new product by Trimco. This is a sliding privacy set, ADA compliant. So it's an ADA compliant privacy set for sliding doors, pocket doors, let's call them, in this application. The unit I'm going to show you will feature a uh, Miri Vale lever and we're gonna go through it uh, one step at a time. But first, so we'll get, we'll get into the general description, some of the facts and figures about it, then we'll get into uh, prepping the door and then installing it. So first of all, this unit when it ships is gonna come with, well it comes with everything, but specifically, this is the Mary Vale lever. You have your lever unit here and that is this is specifically the ins, uh, inside portion okay this is the exterior portion and oh I should say this is a right hand door there's a, uh, a chart down below how uh, defining the hand of the doors. Uh, there's also a link to the handing diagram if you wanted to print that off and, and push it you know, to, you know, towards other people so they can review it. Um, I specifically know that because the, this would be the exterior and the privacy pin is gonna be towards the lock or the jam side. So this would be the exterior. Your jam, it, pardon me, your jam is over here and this door is gonna swing this way, well slide this way. And this, while it's, you know, if you're facing the door from the exterior, this is what it looks like. So if you walked up to the door, it will go to the right to open. Conversely, this is the interior. Now, I know it's the interior because a couple of things. The privacy pinhole is going to be to this side, you know, which would be the jams, uh, the uh, opposite, you know, or the pocket side. And it's got these two large posts here as well, which also indicate it is different than the exterior. Uh, furthermore, what tells me that it's the interior are these countersunk holes uh, versus the holes that are not countersunk on the outside portion. It's obviously for the mounting bolts. Mounting bolts would be on the inside. Uh, very uh, substantial sort of quality. This, these two levers alone, I, uh, they're just substantial and they're all stainless steel as well. It's a magnet and there's just, there's nothing there. This is all, everything on here on these levers, well, there's probably going to be some zinc. There are some steel or brass in the inner workings of the material, but the exterior trim is all stainless steel. So you've got your two levers, your, le your two lever assemblies, and they're going to mate just like this. And your bolts would go through there, and they would go into the tapped holes or the tapped posts that are on the exterior. So, and that's, you know, you can see that that only rotates towards the direction of opening. I'm sorry, I've got it backwards. Uh, no, I don't. I'm good. So, I was showing you the exterior before, so it would look like this. So you'd be able to pull it, retract it, forgive me, retract the latch, and then it would be able to slide in. That way is how that would work. Anyway. The latch assembly is quite unique and there's a lot to say about this. So this is being shown to you as the, um, this would be shown to you as the same um, perspective as we started. This is the exterior view, okay. This is the privacy pin post that you thread in the privacy pin into, okay. I'll just insert that now for demonstration purposes. Obviously that's on the inside of the door Okay, so it'd have to it'd have to look at look to you like this. The door is going to swing this way or slide. I'm on the inside. Privacy pin is here, and I can push and retract that. You have the ability, because of the exterior trim, that hole that's right at the tip of my finger, right there, gives you access to be able to depress 
or to unlock the lock from the exterior by pushing that part in. Right now, it's lo it's in a privacy mode, but if you were to push that in with an out with a small nail, you'd be able to get that open. So, really, and this loose part is just the decorative faceplate that's here. It's these two little triggers here, right at the end, that do the locking. So if I depress those, and I can because the lock is in the unlock, it's in the unlocked position. When I push the privacy pin in to emulate someone being inside, I can no longer push those down. Okay, so this is going to slide open this way. When the door is pushed closed, it will encounter the strike that you've mortised to the frame. And those these two triggers are going to lock on the inside of that strike plate. That's how that's going to work. The Having reviewed the instructions, the only, the most important aspect that is not regular and routine from a standard lock is step two. Um, it's critical to, for the unit to operate correctly that the split uh, spindle is installed correctly. And if it's not, then the unit's not going to work. But you'll know that it's installed correctly because it's the only way it can work. Per step two in the instructions, and there's a link below this video to the instructions, uh, as there is the cut sheet, you've got your handing diagram, your cut sheet. Well, cut sheet's more of a template. It's not more of a template. It is a template. Um, and then your instructions. I'm going to rename all those links so that by the time you see it, it the cut sheet will become template. Um, we'll get to the template in a moment. Instructions. It's step two on the bottom that is really the most important part. All of step one, up steps one through six, is how to go about prepping the door for this. This preparation, which we'll go over in a moment, is a typical 161 preparation, except that it's at two and three eighths backside. A, a true 161 would be a two and three quarter backs up. So this is a one six, this is a, uh, I think it's actually, actually called a 160 prep, but it's a two and an eighth hole, two and three eighths backs up. We'll go over that in a moment. Step one in the installation aspect is to install the latch. That's pretty easy. You're gonna get this inserted into the door where it has to go. Okay, you're on the exterior. It's gonna slide this way. This threaded post needs to be on the inside. Okay, and in that event, there's only one side it can go in. So it has to go in this way. If I'm on the inside, you're on the outside. You're seeing the non-threaded side of the privacy post. Get that in. Then you're going to come in with your decorative, your, your face plate. And that is that's stainless steel as well. We'll have two screws for installing that. There's two of these. Those are even stainless. Once that's installed into the door, you're then going to install and insert your spindle. You've got to, you just got to follow how that goes. So the spindle, there's a ball, there's a spring-loaded ball here. They call it a ball detent. That must be inserted from the inside of the door. So insert spindle. This is called a split spindle because either side can rotate independently. Through the hole in a square orientation. Now the, the instructions are clearly showing that the ball detent is supposed to be positioned going back towards, now, now you're on the inside. The ball detent is clearly shown in the picture to be installed this way. So this image is pretty much what you're looking at. Okay. Now the spindle must be inserted with the ball detent bearing first from the interior side. Pass the half section assembly until it stops on the notch marks. The notch marks they're referring to is on the this on the inside portion right here. That doesn't matter how it goes in, but the ball detent will put in the way that it's shown. It could likely work in other orientations. I've never tried it in other orientations. Pass the half section until it stops at the notch marks. Each half of the spindle must rotate independently. Now, as I'm going through this, I recognized that 
step two is the most important step. We're going to push the, so that the ball detent comes in. Okay, now that now that's it snapped in. You probably heard that, but you're not in yet. You've got to stop when it gets to here. Now it was this aspect of doing this that I found that I had to tap on it a little bit just to take a tack hammer and very carefully get it pushed in, not to stress the latch bolt, but it's hardware, so it has a nice fit and finish. What happened then is the ball detent got all the way to the other side. Now you won't really be able, you will not be able to see that unless you went around to the other side, but you'll know it's, you'll know it's correct because it's going to appear to be symmetrical and both sides will operate independently. Now we've kind of jumped around from the components of this right into the installation and I apologize for that. So at this point I want to back up a little bit. Now that we've got the latch bolt installed properly, where you can see that it's pushed all the way through and symmetrical, the ball detent would be on the inside, pardon me, that would be on the exterior passed all the way through so that you could just see it. Okay, You would be able to see that from the exterior side, you know, through your two and an eighth hole, you'd be able to see it right there in the corner. Okay, now, uh, before I go further with installation, let's cover the rest of the parts. Um, the strike plate is here. Okay, I'm going to remove that. From the package, that's all stainless steel get an idea of what this is dimensionally. One inch by two and a quarter and that is extremely typical for a strike like this. You're going to get two machine screws to hold the entire lock together. You get the two screws for the strike that I just showed you. They're in the package with the strike. You get the two screws for the latch bolt faceplate which is also going to be same size, one inch by two and a quarter. This is the edge of the door. Okay. You'll get your privacy pin. Going back to the strike plate, you're going to get a dust box that will install, and you'll want to use that for sure, that will install behind the strike so that when you look inside the hole in the strike, you don't see chiseled or, or mortised or routed wood. Um, you're going to get your rosettes. These appear to be identical, so there would be no differentiation between... That is not correct. They are not identical. One has a notch here. Um, I do not know which is which. I would say that it would be my preference to put the notch, the notch version. On the out, on the, um, on the inside is where you would typically see this. That notched one would go on the inside. There's a, pri the hole for the privacy pin is there and that can only obviously go in one orientation. It has to go here, okay. Now, back to the installation. So, um, we were at step two. We properly handled step two uh, in terms of getting it installed. And the way we're going to test that simply is uh, you'll, be, you'll be standing on the outside again. Okay, Your outside trim is here. It will install the only way that it can lever has to be vertical. The hole for the privacy pin has to be over the back side of the, the post for the privacy. You can only install that way. So this unit right now is unlocked and the lever will only So you'll be able to rotate that. Your door is going to go this way. So from the exterior, 
you'll be able to, if the door is in the closed position and unlocked, you could rotate the lever, and here's the business end. It retracts the little triggers in the latch bolt, okay? Now, if I were to lock it by pushing in the privacy pin, which emulates, you know, this being attached, the privacy pin, that now all of a sudden becomes rigid, and it will not, it will not unlock. When I disengage the privacy feature, then it goes back to rotating and retracting those triggers. The interior, now, you're, now your perspective is from the inside. Let's post telescope like that, as you can see. Now you're on the inside. This will always retract. If, it's the, if the privacy pin is engaged and it's privacy from the outside, which it's not now, but if it were to be, well, no reason to have guesswork involved. I'm going to insert the privacy pin here and pull it out, or push it in, forgive me. So now the privacy pin is installed. What's not installed are our two rosettes. You would do that before you install the privacy pin. And, and those just install just by carefully placing them over, and then they snap on and down. Okay, it's that simple. Privacy is engaged. Exterior is locked. This is the, you're, now you're on the outside. I can't get out. You're, now you're on the inside. Door is going to swing this way because you're now on the opposite side. It will automatically, now it's locked. Now watch that privacy pin. It popped out as soon as I did that. Okay. Really fantastic item by Trimco. This is a relatively new product and gives a true ADA compliant privacy function to sliding doors, whereas previously their 1069 item, their Trimco 1069 L, was an ADA compliant latching pocket door set, but it was only latching. It was not privacy. Anyone could go up in a locked or in a privacy situation or where it was latched and just immediately go in, and that would work in a lot of instances. Healthcare, you know, there's no privacy involved there uh, when you're dealing with healthcare and patient care, etc. And that works out fantastically. Instances where you've got non, um, where, where you have situations where you do need privacy, uh, could be residential, could be someone is handicapped that lives in the home and there's a pocket door, and this solves that problem. Um, I'm going to pause the video now uh, to review the installation aspect, and then from this moment forward, I'm going to talk about how you put your, how, how you prep the door to get this uh, unit installed. Thank you very much. This part of the video will discuss the uh, procedure by which to go ahead and machine the door for this hardware. Now, keep in mind that you are installing this um, in a pocket door, and a couple of things, uh, just based on my experience of pocket door situations. In a, in a situation like this, you're gonna have, and I just wanna throw out some disclaimers, ideas first. I don't want to snap the rosette all the way down because this is going to a client. You'll have a concept that looks like this, okay? What I mean is this will be installed onto the door. You're going to have the thickness of the rosette on both sides projecting off of the door. So keep in mind that when you've got your pocket door and you slide it open, the door is not going to go in past, you know, where the rosette's going to fall. Unless, of course, you've made some sort of provision a little bit for it, but generally you wouldn't. Your door would be hanging out of the opening with the latch sticking out as well. So from my hand, if this is the edge of the door, you'll have all of this assembly hanging out. You might want to design your pocket door from the, from the beginning to, in, to incorporate that idea, um, keeping in mind that if it is a handicap situation and you need to get a wheelchair through your clear opening uh, requirement as dictated by ADA, 34 inch I believe to be a clear opening, um, needs to be adhered to. So this door might need to be wider than standard. Um, also keep in mind that sometimes people with pocket doors will take the strike jam and then they will apply two pieces of trim so that the door, you know, fits behind 
two pieces of, uh, of trim so that it is a very nice clean finished look not always but if it's a bathroom you might provide that extra amount of privacy by applying wood to the jam of which I'm kind of just drawing here in an elevation perspective it might look like this that little prep here is, is supposed to be the strike your two pieces of trim on either side then your door which will you know slide in that direction so keep in mind all of these concepts before you go about um, installing this uh, to incorporate what a, what a clear opening has to be this is an ADA compliant piece of hardware you're probably using for, for an ADA compliant keep in mind you've got to have a, a clear opening in, in accordance with what's required okay now having said all of that um, two and three eighths back set edge of the door to the center of the hole then you've got the diameter of the of the rosette and that is given here at two and five eighths that is indeed correct two and five eighths diameter is what you're going to have and then you've got the projection of the rows which my tape measure is telling me is about three is three eighths of an inch the installation of this is based on a simple machining process the Trimco calls it a 161 that's really not 161 as I said earlier it's two and three eighths back set so I've I've machined for lock sets like this thousands of times and it's really simple and you don't really need many tools uh, especially you don't need really any specialty tools to do it however the better tools you have the easier and more professional the job becomes um, a two and an eighth hole saw is a great tool to drill your bore through the through the door um, there is the link to the template that's currently no it will be called template that's currently called sh cut sheet and then your link to the instructions okay basically you're going to mark a, 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 a the dimension of two and three eighths of a of an two and three eighths from the edge of the door to the center of the two and an eighth inch hole provided that your door is a square edge door because the back set is properly defined from the center or the fi the center of the thickness of the door to the center of the hole if your door is beveled which it shouldn't be for a pocket door um, it shouldn't be uh, if it is you might want to square that off if you can't then you might want to make your back set about two and seven sixteenths um, if you're measuring from the the beveled or the high side um, then at that point once you've got that marked off so you've got your hole marked off and I've, I use a hole saw um, although it's really for some you know the the use of the tools is kind of a personal sort of decision to make hole saws have always worked for me but they have their disadvantages you could very easily be drilling that hole crooked um, you know a, a, a lot of practice for me made it such that that wasn't the case uh, there used to be a large Schlage um, many, many years ago used to have what was in essence a Forstner bit for drilling a two and an eighth inch hole. Those tool, that tool has been long discontinued. I happen to have a quite old one that I continued to get useful service out of by having it resharpened, etc. Um, some people use a multi-spur bit. Um, I don't like those because they tend to tear the face of the door out. However you go about doing it uh, is, is how you go about doing it. If you bought a lock installation kit from a home center, uh, you're, it's going to be a hole saw. So if you're going to use a hole saw in any tool, really, drill it straight through. I would go until the drill bit of the arbor would point out through the other side, but I would have already have marked that other side to know that where I've drilled through is st is on target with it being a straight hole uh, through the And if I was confident that my hole was straight, I would take the hole saw out, come to the other side of the door, and then drill through the other side to mate to the other side. And that's good. Now I like a hole saw, a bimetal hole saw, because the teeth are so fine that it doesn't tear the veneer out and gives you a nice finished professional looking situation. At that point, um, you have to mortise the edge of the door. And I would always do the two and an eighth hole first because after you mortise for the edge here, you've got a drill for this body to go down. So you want the drill bit to come and extend down into the cavity or the space that the two and an eighth hole saw just created. Now what I would do before I would start any of this is I would have a tool, um, Quickset manufactured a tool, they may still make it, 
and it's just simply an L, it's an L angle, an aluminum L angle, that gives you quick mark points for the, the center of the door, based on it being inch and three eighths or inch and three quarter, and then the back set based on it being either two and three eighths or two and three quarters. So all I would have to do is measure from the top of the door to my center line, use my L bracket, mark the center of the edge where the latch bolt is going to go, and then the center of the um, two and an eighth hole, flip that template around and do the other point, and then I would always go back and measure it again. Measure twice, cut once. Speaking of measurements from the top of the door, before we go further, install this lock so that it is compatible with the height of the other existing locks in the space or on the job. You don't want to have this at 36 inch from the floor up and everything else is at 40 inch. If you have a line of sight down a hallway and you've got all these locks and then you've got one that's funny or too high or too low, it, it will be an issue. Uh, so you'll want to uh, consider what the other requirements are. ADA compliance, if you're about 40 inch off the floor, you're going to be, you know, to the center line, you're going to be in good shape. So mortising the edge would be, for me, drilling my one inch hole with a fly bit. Forgive me. Okay, it is indeed. Now we're looking at the template, and it is indeed referenced as a one inch hole, and I would just use a, a butterfly bit is what I would use. Butterfly bit, I drill that down straight. It needs to be straight because this sort of latch bolt doesn't have a lot of margin. And it needs to fit in straight because the operation of this will bind if it's at all not, not straight. Okay. Once I had my, my, my hole marked, my one inch hole drilled down into the two and an eighth inch cavity, I would then use my template uh, and use a router to finish off for the two and a quarter by in by uh, the two and a quarter by one inch faceplate for this, and the depth of that is typically five thirty seconds of an inch. Uh, looking to see where that is referenced. Yep, it's referenced um, for the door. It's five thirty seconds of an inch. Yes, five thirty seconds of an inch deep. So it's just heavy on an eighth of an inch. Uh, you would then be able to fit this and your latch assembly snug into the edge of the door. You'll want to square out the corners of your hinges. Okay. Um, I would use a corner chisel. We sell those. It's a spring-loaded chisel that specifically squares corners for quarter-inch radius. Uh, real handy tool if you do it all the time. If you don't, hammer and chisel will work. Then, of course, you're going to have the center line of the strike plate in the frame. Now, keep in mind, the center line of the lock equals the center line of the strike. So, if you're measuring from the top of the door, naturally, the top of the door and the inside of the header will not be the same dimension. So, you've got to compensate for that. So, if you've got, you know, 44 inch top of the door to the center line, and then you've got an inch you know, space for the hardware above, inch and a half, whatever it might be, depending on how you've built it, you're going to want to, you know, account for that. However it's going to be, what I'm saying is the center line here's your strike. The center line needs to be the same. So don't transpose 44 inch top of door to the frame. That may not be correct and it likely isn't, so compensate for that. Um, the jam, you know, if you're doing it in place, you know, a router would certainly work. You'd have to come up with a template or a fixture for doing that. If the jam is not installed, definitely do that in the flat. Lay that jam board out and route that with your template. Square your corners out, chisel out the area necessary for the, um, the dust box. They're saying one by two and a quarter, three thirty seconds deep this time. Then you're going to have a one inch diameter hole, five eighths deep. And you know that that does that doesn't work for me um, because the height of this dust box cavity is not one inch. It's heavy on one inch. You can see that it's over an inch. It's an inch and an eighth. Um, you know you're going to want to consider how to how to go about doing that. If it was me. If it was me, you know, I might be tempted to 
use a Forstner bit, have two holes that were basically an eighth of an inch apart, and drill, you know, drill like this with my Forstner bit so that I could get an oblong sort of hole, um, you know, that sort of situation. Some people say, well, you know, hammer and chisel, I'm going to get it in. Great. I just like to I like to use tools that don't involve my my poor carpentry skills. I like to rely on, on on tools for a better professional result. Routers and things like that always give that, in my opinion. Um, at that point, you know, you're, you'll you're square the corners out on the frame. Uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you've not over chiseled or over compensated for anything. Um, a nice tight sort of finish will do it. Now, uh, Tremco has the 1074 available in, in all in several different uh, lever designs as well. The Mary Vale uh, that I've shown you here is a real common unit. Um, and but however, typically made to order, so definitely allow lead time. I've seen lead times as long as six weeks. Uh, I think Trimco would like to be at about three weeks, but I've seen it take longer. Is the, is the, is the honest truth? Uh, so do compensate uh, appropriately for this. Looking at the rest of the description uh, in conclusion here. Uh, you're going to be dealing with doors that are going to be working from uh, inch and three eighths. They say to two and a half inch thick. Uh, you're going to want to indicate, and that will work. I can see the length of the bolts based on the length of the bolt and how the inner and outer bolting mechanism telescopes. I would have no reason to believe that this would not work for a, a door up to two and a half inch thick, but that would be really unusual. Inch and three quarter, inch and three eighths is what you're going to be dealing with. Um, You've got dimensions uh, of the, the lever. Uh, the levers are installed vertically only. Um, cannot be installed horizontally. They're, they're just not going to work that way because certainly for the way that this is all machined and manufactured, it will only install vertically. Okay. 10 degrees to unlatch. Okay. 10 degree from vertical. It's a great quality item. Uh, Trimco, that, that name is synonymous with the phrase great quality item. Their fit and finish is exceptional. When you look at the detail on the lever, it's gorgeous. The only marks on here is my handling marks, and it just looks fantastic. Uh, I would not hesitate to use Trimco on any project. As I said earlier, sometimes the lead times are a bit long, but the material from them is always well worth the wait. If you have any questions on any of the Trimco 1074-1 ADA compliant sliding pocket door privacy sets or any other Trimco product, please do feel free to reach out to us. Thank you very much.